One, two, three, five! They were assets that were made by Dave Dexter in the 1960s at Capitol. Original masters came over from the UK and Dave Dexter decided on his own he wanted to change them and enhance them and make them something different than what they were. And that's what became the US releases of these albums, which make them completely unique from the UK releases. For a project as important as this, we still want to go back to the original analog, and we're incredibly lucky that uh, we've been able to preserve these assets to the degree that they still sound as good as they did back in 1964. I could tell it was not a straight remastering job, even from analog, which is daunting in and of itself on an artist like the Beatles. But this was really to try and mimic the sound and be true to the traditional sound of those first pressings. Now, I don't mean make them sound exactly the same, but we had to make sure we were using the same assets that were used to cut those first records, make sure that everything was in line with those and true to the spirit of how they sounded. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. These, at the time that they were made, these tapes, were the only things that contained the music. So they were really, they were work tapes. They were, every time something needed to be done with this music, this tape would be pulled and somebody would do something with it. Put it on a tape machine, play it, make a single, make an album master, make a cutting master, whatever it may be. So these things were handled a lot in those days. And in the case of the Beatles, the work was always very well documented. These are museum pieces. These are Mona Lisa pieces of art. Having this master tape and the master tape card, the mastering cutting notes here, having this record that I can listen to and forensically go back and forth which allows me to be creative in a responsible way to make this something different than what it is, was an amazing advantage for me. I was able to see this tape box, read the notes. The client is Capital Dexter, from Dave Dexter. The artist is the Beatles from England, because I guess we didn't understand where they were from at that point. And that is a mind blower in and of itself. It's been a Tech at the time, in the 1960s, was much different than it is now. They made some choices to roll off certain areas. A lot of the low end that is beautiful and present and deep on these master tapes is not necessarily on these records. Also, some of the top ends, there's a lot of Ringo bashing these cymbals, which is part of his unique style and a beautiful way he plays drums. Some of that stuff was also rolled out, you know, because it could be problematic for cutting in those days. We have to be mindful about how these mono tapes are acting, in the low end especially, because as the stylus is going up and down and the groove is getting wider and narrower, a stylus then has to follow that track, and if the groove is too shallow, it's gonna jump right out. If it's too deep, it's gonna go down and probably bottom out and sound like distortion. All of that stuff affects the music that's being etched on here, so we have to be careful with all of those logistics while we're trying to be cool and creative. It's a very fascinating process that's still done the same today as it was done 20 years ago, 40 years ago, even 60 years ago. So the tape machine is the first part. And then of course it goes through any sort of creative enhancements that we want through vintage EQs that were at Capitol Studios in the 70s, and I have those here, and I'm using those on this project. It then goes to the lathe, which etches this music into these discs, which is amazing. We have a very fixed amount of real estate that we can use on any lacquer that we're cutting for a 12-inch record. Depending on the type of music you have, depending on the length of the music, depending on its dynamics, all of that's going to affect how the Sapphire stylus cuts into the lacquer and makes this music happen. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're letting the tapes speak for themselves without the limitations that we had 60 years ago and they just sing beautifully, and that's what we try to get onto these new vinyls. These deep bass tones that you hear now that were not present on the 64 pressings. You can hear John's chest when he sings. You can hear Paul's very crystal clear voice on some of the songs that he's singing on. There's this one line in one of the songs where Paul's bass is following George's guitar uh, lead and all the way down to the low E, and I never necessarily experienced that before. I know it's there. It's been there forever, but I just never heard it as I heard it from listening to these tapes in their natural state. That's what we tried to capture, and I think that we did a pretty good job this time. Mm -hmm.